Welcome back to another example of proof by cases. The proposition this time looks a little strange, so let's think about it. For all integers n, if 5 does not divide n, then either n squared is congruent to 1 mod 5, or n squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. Now in the last screencast, we said that before we can prove something, we need to come to grips with three questions. What do the terms mean in the statement? Why should we use cases, if we're going to think about using cases? And then what are the cases? The main term here is the notion of integer congruence. So let's just recall that a is congruent to b mod 5, and mod 5 congruence is the only thing we need to remember here. Uh, that means that 5 divides a minus b. Now under the surface there's another term, the notion of 5 dividing something. So recall again that 5 divides x means that there exists an integer such that x is equal to 5 times k. Now something that we have to think about in this problem is what would it mean for 5 not to divide x? Well on the surface it means that there is no integer k such that x equals 5k. But if you dig a little deeper you can get more to work with. If 5 doesn't divide x evenly then think back to your basic arithmetic and what does this mean? If 5 doesn't divide x evenly then it must divide with a remainder left over. Now that's a basic fact of long division and another basic fact of long division is that the remainder can only be 1, 2, 3, or 4. The remainder couldn't be 0 because otherwise 5 would divide x evenly and we're saying that it doesn't. And the remainder can't be any larger than 4 because in long division, remember if you're dividing by 5 and you end up with a, a remainder that's 5 or larger, it just means that you could divide again. So keep this notion about the remainders in mind. Second, why should we use cases in this case? Well, realize that we may not decide to use cases here. There's just because we're in a section called proof by cases doesn't mean that we're going to do it this way all the time. Let's consider the alternatives. If we use the contrapositive, we'd have to negate the disjunction that's there in the conclusion. And that would say that if n squared is not congruent to 1 mod 5 and n squared is not congruent to 4 mod 5, then 5 does divide n. This seems complicated, but not overly so. I mean, it is conceivable that we could prove this by contraposition. But on the other hand, a direct proof would involve assuming a negative statement, and this would assume involving two negative statements. So why just work with one negative statement instead of two? A proof by contradiction would involve assuming three things. 5 does not divide n, n squared is not congruent to 1 mod 5, and n squared is not congruent to 4 mod 5. That's three assumptions and that's good for us because that's a lot of information to have on our side. But that information isn't terribly informative because all the assumptions are statements that are phrased in the negative. Still, you could try to do this by contradiction and it might be a decent exercise to give it a shot. Actually, the cases come in if you attempt a direct proof. So just one thing to mention, we call this proof by cases, but it's really not any a different method of proof. Uh, it's no different than direct proof. It's just a way that you could go if you attempt a direct proof in this case. A direct proof would involve assuming 5 does not divide n, then show that either n squared is congruent to 1 mod 5 or n squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. The cases would come in a couple of points here. For one thing, if you're proving that one or another of two possible conclusions holds, then cases could be useful because in each case, literally one or the other of those statements in the conclusion might hold. The other thing to mention segues into the question of what the cases are, and I'm going to give this to you as a concept check. How many cases do you think there are going to be here? What's the minimal amount of cases that we need to prove this theorem? Is it 2, 3, 4, 5, or none of the above? So pause the video and come back with your answer. So a smart way to set up cases in this particular problem would involve four cases. And those cases are based on the observation we made earlier that if 5 doesn't divide n, then when you do divide 5 into n, you get one of four possible remainders, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And so we're going to set up one case for each of those four possibilities. This situation breaks naturally into four non-overlapping cases that cover all the bases here. In each case we're going to show that either n squared is congruent to 1 mod 5 or n squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. Before we do that, here's how we're going to think of the remainders. If 5 divided n, that would mean that there would exist an integer k such that n is equal to 5 times k. If n divided by 5, on the other hand, has remainder of 1, then there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 5k plus 1. That plus 1 indicates the remainder. For example, 31 can be written as 31 equals 5 times 6 plus 1, and there's the remainder. Likewise, if n divided by 5 has remainder 2, then there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 5k plus 2, and so on for the remainders 3 and 4. This is sort of like the notion of a type 1 integer that you looked at some time ago.
So with that representation, we'll jump into the cases. So case one, let's assume that n divided by 5 has a remainder 1. And again, how we're writing that is that we're going to assume that n is equal to 5k plus 1 for some integer k. Then we want to show that either n squared is congruent to 1 mod 5 or n squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. That means 5 divides either n squared minus 1 or 5 divides n squared minus 4. Now if you look at n squared minus 1, you can substitute in n is equal to 5k plus 1 and do some algebra. And you see that in this case, 5 does indeed divide n squared minus 1. So therefore, n squared is congruent to 1 mod 5 as desired. Since one of the statements in the disjunction is true, we've proven the result. We do not have to deal with the other possible case in that disjunction. In case 2, we're going to assume that 5 divided by n has remainder 2. And again, we're going to write that as assume that n is equal to 5k plus 2 for some integer k. In this case, if we try to substitute into n squared minus 1, we do not get what we want here. Let me just do the scratch work up here in the margins. Remember, we want to prove that n squared minus 1 is divisible by 5. But if you work it out, it just doesn't happen. There's no way we can make it happen. But fortunately, remember that we don't have to prove that n squared minus 1 is divisible by 5, just that either n squared minus 1 or n squared minus 4 is divisible by 5. So in this case, n squared minus 1 didn't give us something divisible by 5, so let's look at the other expression, n squared minus 4. In this case, if I substitute in n equals 5k plus 2 into n squared minus 4, we do the math, and in the end, we get a multiple of 5. So in case 2, n squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. Again, only one of the two statements in the disjunction that sits there in the conclusion needs to be satisfied. I'll just quickly move through remain, the remaining two cases, and you can pause the video and look at the text at any point you want. In case 3, assume that n is equal to 5k plus 3 for some integer k. That's the remainder 3 case. So putting this into n squared minus 4 gives us something divisible by 5. And so in this case, n squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. Finally, in case 4, assume that n is equal to 5k plus 4 for some integer k. Putting this into n squared minus 1 and doing the math gives us something that's divisible by 5. So in this case, n squared is congruent to 1 mod 5. In each of the four possible cases, we got that n squared was congruent to either 1 mod 5 or 4 mod 5. And so now the result is completely proven. So this proof using cases shows that uh, proof by cases isn't really a new method. It's just a direction that we can take when writing a proof. And sometimes having something phrased in the negative, such as 5 does not divide n, can actually work in our favor if we know how to rephrase that statement as something positive. Thanks for watching.